This is Rachel Hill for the African American Cultural Gardens Sankofa web series. And in this series, we're gonna to bring to you some of the most fantastic people in Cleveland who are changing lives, making impacts. One of the things that we also discuss with them is what does black history and culture mean to them? And we also talk to them about what do they love about the garden as well. So these are wonderful conversations that we think you should sit down and watch and you can learn and grow and be inspired because a garden belongs to all of us and it is so important. But also you need to know about what people in the community are doing to better the community because we all know that we have better days ahead. Please make sure you stay tuned for all of the episodes of the Sankofa web series brought to you by the African American Cultural Gardens. Hello everybody, my name is Wayne Dawson and I am your host for the African American Cultural Garden Sankofa Educational Series. Thank you so much for joining us and we are in for a treat today because we are sitting down and talking to a living legend. We're talking about black history here in Northeast Ohio. We're talking with Robert Madison. Uh, He's a man who's done so many things over the years, an architect extraordinaire, but he's a whole lot more than that. Mr. Madison, first of all, thank you so much for your time. We really, really appreciate you stopping by to chat with us today. Uh, first and foremost, let's just get this out the way, and, and I always like to ask this question at the very beginning. Uh, who is Robert Madison? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I've been asking myself that same question <laughs> for a number of years. Yes, yes. That's a good question. I think that uh, I would answer by saying, first of all, I'm old. I'm 98 years old now. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm grateful. And I'm thankful for that. So in those 98 years, a lot has happened. And the Robert P. Madison that you're looking at now is, is a product of the Depression years where I ate a sweet potato sandwich for lunch, where sometimes we didn't have any food at all back in the Depression. Then I, uh, after the Depression, I went to Howard University for years. But then the war came along, the Second World War. Second World War. So I was uh, second lieutenant in the 92nd Infantry Division, the Buffalo Soldiers. Mm. Went to Fort Huachuca, uh, trained there, went overseas, fought in Italy for, uh, from September continuously to December 26th when the German uh, guns, uh, 88 b uh, bomb, finally exploded and I was wounded in action. You were wounded in Almost action? Almost died, yeah. Wow. But I survived that. 
two more years in Italy. Then I came back and uh, went back to school at that time. I went, then I went to West Reserve University. Okay, here, here in the city. Studied yeah. architecture there. Came back. I, I mean, graduated. Uh, had to get a job. They didn't hire color people. Made it very clear, we don't hire color people. I went from office to office and uh, we didn't hire color people. The dean at the School of Architecture at Reserve said, he was going to work in the lumber yard, something like that, boy. Boy. Yeah. Mm. I said, no, dean, I'll be an architect. He didn't believe that. So finally, there was one architect that I knew who was my professor. I didn't call him on the telephone. I went to his office door. I knocked on the door. He said, oh, hi, how are you? I said, look, I'll work for you for free for a month. Then you can decide if you want to hire me. He said, okay, well, I'll, I'll let you know. We talked a bit tonight. And two weeks later, he said, come, you can go to work. During that two weeks, he had to ask everybody in the building if it was all right for a black person to come and work there in an office, not pushing the broom. So everybody would be able to say, well, why not? Let him come in. So that's how I got my start as an architect. And I, <laughs> I, I, then I got married. <laughs> this is all who Robert P. Madison is. <laughs> then uh, I suppose the biggest surprise came that I worked with this fellow for about, I worked for him exactly for three years. When I got married, my wife, who was from Washington, D.C., I'd met her before at Howard University. At Howard, yeah, yeah. She, uh, we started talking about uh, taking the state board examination to be registered. Okay. So every, af af after dinner, for two hours, for two years, I started to take the state board examination. Okay, wow. All this stuff. And I said, I'm ready. <laughs> I went down to take the state board exam. It, what are you going to do? What? You, you boy? You, you. Well, it happens I passed it the first time. That was the third time it happened in the history of the board exam. Did somebody pa pass yeah. it the first time? First time, yeah. yeah. And you were the first African American to. <laughs> and that shook them up. That oh, really shook them up. Gosh. I studied, though. We, we, we spent, you know, I went back. They didn't teach me in school, but I did that. At any rate, uh, so I was registered. And then we started going. My wife, who was terrific, she just. Was she, an, is she an architect too? No. She was just your support she sister? She was a school teacher. She okay. was from, from Washington, D.C. She had gone to Dunbar High School and that, Minor yeah. Teachers College. Yeah. And then from there she went to study, she got a master's degree from the University of Chicago. That was before we got married. Then we got married. I'd okay. met her before when I was okay. hired, but okay. we got married. You had spotted it out. You just kind of. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> but uh, what happened after, after I, I, I passed the examination, then she says, let's get some more education. I said, okay, fine. I had the GI Bill of Rights, which meant that I could go to pay my way then, because when, after the war, we soldiers had money. Mm -hmm. So I, she said, let's go to Harvard. I said, Harvard? She said, Harvard? I said, Harvard? So we applied for Harvard and they accepted me. <laughs> Harvard University, Graduate School of Design. Wow. So that was, that was really something. Wow. But after a year there at Harvard, uh, she was working in the library of the School of Architecture there. At Harvard? At Harvard, mm -hmm. yeah. And found some advertisements for scholarships. She said, let's go. So I applied for a scholarship to study in Paris, France, and they called it Bazaar. And I got it. I was awarded a scholarship. So weird because uh, this was 1952. I got my degree in, uh, from Harvard in uh, February of 51, yep. No, 52. <laughs> That, uh, that summer, uh, I got, got registered. Then my baby was born. I got married before the baby was born. Okay. And then we got the scholarship to study in Paris. I said, what are we going to do now? And everybody said, you're nuts. You, 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 got, a, you got a one month old baby. Am I right? So Lipton said, let's go. <laughs> we went to Paris, France, studied the Ecole de Bazaar with a two month old baby. 
<laughs> in what we call the big Karen carriage. Okay. But people say, he, they're crazy. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine taking a two-month-old baby? They can't even speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you that. Now, you, you, and, and what I'm noticing is you, you're, you're saying we, which to me tells me that that marriage was, was a big thing with you, and it was, a, it was a team. You and your wife were a team. You got that right, brother. You really do. That's exactly right. She, 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 had her, she had her master's degree from the University of Chicago before we got married. So then she was going to, architecture, was, nobody, nobody ever, whoever heard of a black architect? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the phrase that went around. Yeah. That's, what the, that's what they used to say, whoever heard of a black architect, huh? Exactly. Yeah. So she says, let's go. So I went to Paris, studied there for a year. It was wonderful. Paris, France. Really? It was exciting. Did that influence the way you looked at architecture? I think so. Yeah. I think so because, first of all, when I studied at, at Harvard, that was with Walter Gropius. Walter Gropius was one of the pioneers of the avant-garde movement in Germany. Okay. As a matter of fact, he started a school in Germany. Uh, I forgot the German name. I don't speak German anymore. In which he was famous. And that was when Hitler wanted to get rid of him because he, he believed that people were able and he had Jews on his faculty and he wanted to get our black men in his school. Yeah. The Germans didn't like that. They said, it's just, mm. you know, it would, it's the race that's clean and pure. So we defied some of that stuff. And uh, Walter Grover was German. He taught me. We had a great... Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And then in Paris, uh, uh, for a whole year, that was, that was really one year. <laughs> With a one-month-old baby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we came back, and I worked for another year teaching at Howard. And I said, let's go. Then we started my practice. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Your brothers were involved. My brothers were coming along. They, they were younger. They were younger than you. Oh, yeah, I'm the oldest. And they were also studying architecture. Julian was, okay. as was Bernard. Wow. The other one who was, he became a, he be, my mother thought he was going to be a preacher, but he became a medical doctor. Oh, okay. He finished reserve. Yeah. So, yeah, so Julie and I were partners for 30 years. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's where Madison and Madison was. Madison and Madison, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and Mildred, you, you know Mildred, mm -hmm. that was uh, Julia's wife. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew Mildred very well. She was. She was a, she, she was a, she, she was a determined woman. <laughs> you, you, you know it, didn't you? Yes. Oh, yeah, she was yeah. on the board of education. Exactly. Here well, in the city of Cleveland. Well, exactly. Let well, me ask you this: education had to be something that your parents instilled in you guys. You're right, Wayne. Uh, first of all, my father uh, was born in Mobile, Alabama, and my mother in Selma, Alabama, and my mother. In, my father's parents divorced, and they wanted to send him to school, so they sent him to a school in, in Selma, Alabama, called, uh, I don't remember that school right now, but it was a boarding school, mm -hmm. and that's where they met. Mm -hmm. So they were both there. Then my father was then went to Howard University with a scholarship okay. to study engineering. Wow. Engineering? Whoa. Wow. <laughs> it's great. Well, yeah. And my mother went to Morris Brown. In, 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 in Atlanta. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So, so was, your, your education was just part of who they that were. Was, they passed it on to you. You absolutely right, Wayne. Yeah. You got that exactly right. That was, that was the thing. You, we, we've got to, you've got to get an education. Let me ask you this: How was it being a, a, an African American uh, architecture firm? And, 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 and dealing into, in, in society. How, how, how did you guys make your way? I mean, how was that early on? That was terrific. You're, you, you, that's a good, you know, you're, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Uh, that was a good, but the reason is this is that, so when, when I said we're going to open practice office, who ever heard of a black office? Black, that was black people and white people. Okay. You know, they hadn't been one. So but you were you were the one of the first or the first the first the first Deeper, yeah. that's 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 African American history right there that's, that's the okay first, uh, but what happened was that uh, they had some people who let me finish the basements and work on the basements mm -hmm. and this and, that and the other mm -hmm. but there were some competitions 
statewide competitions where anybody could enter for design. And I said, we, did, we, we went. So we designed, it was, it was a house, a low income house. There were, there were about a hundred, about, I think 300 ant candidates. And I entered two, 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 two proposals. Okay. And I won honorable mission and, and I won second, third prize in honorable mission. Who ever heard of a black house? Not a real one, yeah. Got a third prize. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, it was able to people began to say, "Oh, guy must know what he's doing." And then the medical doctors, black doctors in Cleveland, who were not permitted to practice or practice their medicine, didn't have a place to work. They employed me to design a medical center. And that was where? What? Where was that located? 50, on, on, on East 150th Street. 150th, 150th, yeah. 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 They still, they got the building now, they call it the Madison. And there was another building that, the first one was on uh, Kinsman. Okay. 139th and Kinsman. Okay. That was the Medical Associates building. Kenny Clement, the four doctors there. Okay. This was, see, see, at that time, you know, black people didn't have access to things. So there, were no, there was no access for these doctors to practice their profession. So they went around from the houses and to the meet, and I got I designed the person which won a design award, <laughs> surprisingly. But that was that was that was how I got to started practicing, yeah. and from there, you know, things we got a little bit better. But that yeah. that was really uh, yeah. When I think about it now, you asked me the question. You 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 stirred my memory. Yeah. That was what happened. Well, let me ask you this. You, you've done so much over the, you Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you're involved in that, you've done so much. Um, what are you most proud of? I guess the, the, the project I'm most proud of is the American Embassy in Dakar, Senegal. Because uh, for some reason, that was just when African countries were getting their independence. Okay. From, you know, the white people. Yeah. And, and, and Dakar, which was uh, a French-speaking colony formerly uh, occupied by pr France, okay. uh, needed, need, they, they were just now independent, they needed an embassy. So the American government says, we gotta build an embassy, new one over there. And I don't know what they did, but they finally gave me a telephone call, said, won't you come to Washington for an interview? So I went to Washington for an interview, I passed that, and then I had to come back three or four more times to meet with the architects who were selection committee, the deans of the schools of architecture of Harvard, Princeton, and Yale. <laughs> that was a committee I, I had to appear before. <laughs> now, I mean, what was that like? I mean, how, I mean, you, you know, here you are, a brother, African American. Good question. You, you're good. You're good, Wayne. You're really good. Uh, you know. Back in those days, uh, everything we did was sort of unique. Mm -hmm. and not only that, but uh, that was a time when Carl Stokes was mayor. And I was involved, not before, running. He was running. When he started mayor. running, I okay. got on his ticket and I wrote a lot of his proposals for building stuff. Wow. So and, yeah. and we, I went with him on the whole campaign thing, campaign trail, you know, yeah. Carl. Yeah. But the point was that uh, we began then, you know, Cleveland was. Not like it is now, but the ghetto, that was a ghetto. Mm -hmm. And it was okay. Mm -hmm. It was it was okay. It was it. a ghetto, but it was it was it was our ghetto. Oh, I yeah. mean we you know exactly. there was we had professionals in there and all of that stuff. Anybody who was black who was import would live lived there. Mm -hmm. I remember Seventy ninth Street was the farthest I went east. Seventy ninth. <laughs> we lived at well, we lived you know central area and all that. Sort yeah, of central. Yeah. But uh, the, the point was that uh, my my practice and what we did was really unique. And uh, Carl Stokes was uh, running for mayor when he got elected. Uh, he asked me to be. I was on his uh, urban design urban committee for about three months. Mm -hmm. Then he got some import, imported somebody there. But at that time, the city of Cleveland had a lot of professionals living in the city of Cleveland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we went mm -hmm. to school, we went to church, we went to, went to, yes. to shop here. Mm -hmm. And there was, a, there, was a, there was a neighbor, we had also other kinds of people, you know, bad people, mm -hmm. but they lived together. That was mm -hmm. where we were. Because we, 150 was as far east as I ever went back in those days. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, it was, it was uh, I went to St. John AME Church is where my church was, mm -hmm. but we all lived there. Mm -hmm. but the other thing you gotta remember that we didn't have cars like we had today. Okay. We had a street car or walk. Okay. We walked to church, we walked here. We walked. Yeah, yeah. So it was a different environment. You, you know, next door was Carl, next door was the lady of the night, stuff like that, but mm -hmm. that's the way it was. You've seen so much over the years. You've seen, you know, change, good yeah. and oh, bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What would be your advice to today's generation, young people today? What would be your advice from your point of view? I believe this. I said, you know, first of all, God has given us an intellect, has given us perception, given us all, and we can earn them. We can even go study more. But to realize that it's out there and it's up to us to make it better in any way we can. And we had all kinds of groups of people, doctors, lawyers, businessmen, who came together to try to improve the environment as we saw it because 105th Street was about the limits to where we could go mm -hmm. back in those days. We lived there. And uh, I can name all these people who were there, but there was, a, there was a community of cohesive intellects. And there was a communion. We, 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 we knew each other. We, mm -hmm. we, we dined together, ate together, mm -hmm. lunch together, you know, uh, mm -hmm. restaurants and all that. And then when I think about it now, I think about, I'm sorry to say, but we've lost something. Mm -hmm. uh, we had two banks back when I was there, Quincy Saving Loan Company and, and the other bank. I Bustamante had a bank. Bustamante, that first bank. Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah, my brother served on his board. Okay. But there was a bank. Then there was, and you, and, and you know, on, on, on Cedar Avenue, you had restaurants, you had barber shops, you had, you had the things that needed to survive, mm -hmm. and around were these different communities where people live. What's missing today, as far as you're concerned? I think what's really missing today is a sense of identity. I think that, uh, I thought about that an awful lot, Wayne. I said, you know, yeah, we, we're, we're free and we can do this. You know, I'm, I live in Shaker Heights now and it's fine, but uh, most of my neighbors are not like me and I don't, I don't, we don't come on the street anymore and meet with my friends and my people. We don't know each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure there's some people who don't like my living there. Mm -hmm. But so I think what, what really is missing today is a, is, a, is a sense of a togetherness and a belief that together we can achieve. Mm. But we've got to be together and we, we've got to recognize that uh, it's for all of us, not some of us. I, I know some, some of the people I know moved out to Seoul and places where they, well, fine, but that which we had that at community. one time mm. is not there as far as mm. I can say. There may be a groups of people who are doing it, but I don't know. How important is black history? I think black history is, is, is critically important. I, I really think uh, that if we could understand where we have come from, I've been doing a lot of things about slavery and uh, it's about a story. I, there's a American, African American Culture Garden is being proposed out there and I had prepared a scheme for that. And I said, you know, the garden I believe in ought to be a place where, first of all, we're gonna talk about when black people came to America mm -hmm. and the progress they have made with all the sacrifices they've made with all the disappointments they've made and and there was there was progress and i remember the day when carl stokes was elected mayor that was like uh, ooh, ooh, the world is changing i know <laughs> and then several many years later the president of the united states i think when those things happen we just it, we got it made 
But that was only, as far as I'm concerned, a symbol of what is possible. Hmm. And significant in that we just can't stop now until we got here. We've got we've got to bring all of us together to really make this meaningful. This what I, I I'm, I'm really you ask me, but I'm I'm kind of saddened about the way things are going. I, I'm saddened because uh, we don't have a cohesiveness like we're used to. Mm -hmm. uh, used, used to be a time where I could get on the, get out to the sidewalk and all my talk to people up and down the street. Mm -hmm. But now I got a friend who lives in Solon, one mm -hmm. lives in East Cleveland, one yeah. lives in Yeah, yeah. So there, there, there's not that 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 mm -hmm. cohesive to get well, that's 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 my view. I don't know what What have you learned? What have I learned? In ninety eight years. Well I have learned this. I have learned first of all that black people are really a marvelous group. When I, when I research and think about what they have come to, when you think about enduring slavery, and, and, the, and not only slavery, but th this modern day slavery in a sense, in that they're prohibited from this, they're prohibited from that. What I have learned is that if, if we could really get ourselves together in a sense of unity and begin slowly but peacefully to include more of our people because I get very sad when I read about these some kids shooting and stuff like this, gangs and stuff like that. We don't need that. I know why they're, they, they were deprived, but uh, this is part of my sadness about where we are. Robert Madison legendary man thank you for blessing us you've blessed us with your wisdom and you continue to bless us with your example thank you sir thank you thank you Wayne thank I you, really appreciate you. that that is a reality man hey, you've been watching the uh, African American Cultural Garden Sankofa educational series we have been chatting with Robert Madison hope you enjoyed it I know I did thank you sir thank you for joining us See you next time. The Association of African American Cultural Gardens highlights excellence in the community. Now it's time to see if you know this excellent individual. She was born on December 13, 1882 on the Woodburn Plantation near Pendleton, South Carolina. She started washing, ironing, and cleaning at the age of 10 after her father's death. She studied nursing at Hampton Institute Training School for nurses in Virginia and graduated in 1905. Armed with the self-help philosophy of Booker T. Washington, she moved to Cleveland, Ohio with a nickel and a prayer. She attended Marshall Law School and passed the Ohio Bar. She organized the Working Girls Association in 1911 to provide safe living quarters for unmarried women and girls. These girls needed a place of residence. And it was later changed to the Phyllis Wheatley Association. She founded the Women's Civic League in Cleveland. This was in 1943. She became the vice president of the NAACW. If you guessed Jane, Edna Hunter, then you do know. Hi, I'm LaVita Ewing. Giving Tuesday is a global generosity movement unleashing the power of people to transform their communities and the world. On Tuesday, November 30th, please make the African American Cultural Garden your charity of choice. We have raised over $700,000 for phase two, but we need your support to complete the garden. Go to aaacg.org to make your tax deductible gift or mail your check to PO Box 20237, Cleveland, Ohio 44120. Thank you.